Hello. For today's video, I want to have a look at working with corner hot foil stamps. So things like this and this. And this and these are like these are like the, the bottom layer of a topper and the, I'm gonna, there's going to be a sentiment panel on top so it doesn't matter if things don't quite fit um, because we're going to be sorting all of that out as part of the process so for these so far I've used sort of hot foil stamps that are basically the same size in each direction this one oops, this one's completely symmetrical so it doesn't matter which way around you, you look at it it's the same okay it means you know that there's a line would go down the middle there and it's the same on both sides but some of the others whilst they're roughly the same size and I do mean roughly the same size in both directions they're obviously not got a, a, a line down there that would be a mirror image okay but they are kind of that shape um, and this one as well again it's not the same in both directions but it is roughly the same size down each of these sides okay so that's what I've used for those samples um, and then I've also got some others that aren't that shape so for example this one is obviously much longer on one side than the other so I'm going to talk a bit about those in the second part of the video. So let's have a look first. Let me see. I want that one first. So for these cards, I've used just a, a square die cut out, just a plain square. And on this card, it's, it's that size one. And let me just check the size of that for you. That is that cuts a 10 centimeter square okay so if, if you've not got dies you could cut these on your paper trimmer or your guillotine so i've cut my square pop that there and then you have to line up your die now the one i'm going to do first i've done this one and then i decided that would have looked better in black because the card it's going with is this one so i've prepared some some card bases just with some matting and layering so that's going to go on there and then i've got sentiment in the middle okay but as i say i i got as far as as this and thought that would have been better in black so i'm going to do that first and show you how we get everything positioned correctly so this is my hot four stamp this is a couture creations one it was from their Petit Jardin collection. I'm not sure if you'll still find it. And that's the case with lots of things I'm using. I've had some of them a while, quite a while. Um, so you might not be able to get the exact same hot foil stamps as I'm using. But I really wanted to give you ideas so that as new collections come out, and perhaps they include corners, you don't go, oh, I'm not going to buy that because I don't know how I'd use it. You go, oh, it's a corner. I know exactly how I'd use that. Okay. So it'll give you ideas for when you see things in the future, how they can be used. OK, so I've got my square of black card. Actually, it's a, it's a bigger square on this one. Let me put that card to one side and the other one that I was looking at. OK, and I've got this lovely... Um, it's a sort of chocolate coppery colour foil. Um, I really like it for masculine sort of cards. Um, it's not a bright copper. It's kind of a almost like a tarnished copper. So I need to. I'm going to need to cut some foil, and because I need to just check my size, I'm just going to cut the first piece before I. Uh, yeah, about there will do cut a piece of foil off before I start positioning my hot foil stamp and heating it. Right, so that's some foil. Okay, 
now my hot foil stamp now to position it what i've got is a stamp press magnet that i've covered in masking tape okay so i've got handles that i can get hold of okay so it's a stamp press type magnets you can buy spare ones okay or borrow one from your stamp press and, and then you don't lose it amongst your foiling stuff okay so i've got my piece of black card and i'm going to position this now this die when it cuts uh leaves me kind of a, a bevel around the edge so i'm just going to come just the edge of that bevel with my hot foil stamp and i'm going to put my magnet on the back so do make sure you've got make sure that's focused the pattern side down okay and the magnet goes on the back and that means that isn't going to move when i start picking my card up okay now you're probably thinking but what about the foil i'm coming to that in a minute so let me put the card out of the way I'm doing over my go press and foil which is nice and warm i'm going to open the lid and i'm going to take my piece of card now i like to do this so that i get my hot foil stamp in the middle of this area as much as possible and that's not because of it heating that's because of of getting good pressure from my die cutting machine so i'm going to position my piece of card in the corner here because then i've got two straight edges to line it up with so i can make sure it's exactly lined up and i will then be able to put it back in exactly the same place i'm just going to slide my finger underneath the edge of my masking tape hold my hot foil stamp down i've just moved it let me just let me just make sure that didn't move on the card it did it twisted right so going back down here normally i i just stand up and lean over my machine without taking it off the base so holding down my hot foil stamp just underneath the edge of my tape and then i'm going to slide my magnet off and then i can pick my card up and leave my hot foil stamp to warm up so i'm just sliding that back into the base over there so that that heats up the hot foil stamp and then i can cut some foil now i have used this die quite a few times but what you might like to do is this let me just move that round and i'm just going to zoom the camera in a bit uh, there Oops, get it focus on that okay so you can see my hot foil stamp there under my lid and I'm just going to get a feel for how far along this comes. And if I, if I was to fold my foil in half, would it be big enough? And I think it would just about. So I'm going to just put a mark at the halfway. Now you could, of course, do that before you start heating your hot foil stamp. So I've not done a hard crease. It's just a little mark so that I can see where to start trimming my foil so that the trick with these is not to go corner to corner or to cut the thing in half straight away so i'm going to go up a bit maybe about half an inch centimeter and a half something like that and then i'm going to go across so that i end up with about the same amount on the other edge okay so i've got let me zoom the camera out again so i've got a piece of foil that's a right angle corner but it doesn't go to points it goes to straight bits i'll hold that so you can see it okay so that's one piece of foil cut i'm going to cut another piece and I'm going to put the diagonal across the diagonal which is why i didn't crease it lots and that will go there or i can go back over here pretty much avoid that crease line so up there 
and along towards curling. Okay, so from that piece of foil I cut, that's the little piece of waste I've got. So while I've been cutting my foil, my hot foil stamp has got nice and warm. And I want some shims. Haven't tested this bit, so actually, have I got an off-cut black card? Bear with me. Let's get a scrap of black card. That's the same card as I've used. So with my waist piece, I'm gonna it's not a big enough corner to cover the hot four stamp. I'm just gonna cut a triangle like that. I'm gonna cut a piece of card and I'm going to test how many shims I need. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with three, okay? But it's it's uncoated card, it's quite a detailed hot for stamp, although it's not very big. So what I'm going to do without moving my hot foil stamp, and that's very important, do not move your hot foil stamp when you're doing this. very carefully put a piece of card on I'm going to put my I've got a a folded piece of 250 GSM card so that's two layers and then I've got a single piece that's three, I'm going to put those on there just going to make sure that is still at temperature because I have taken it off the base and let the green light has stayed on oh no and then it's gone to red so I'm just gonna wait for that to warm up and then I'm gonna roll that through my die cutting machine so let me just turn the camera while I'm waiting so that's warming up as I, said, I love that copper color for doing perhaps more men's cards I also love this um, shiny grey colour, which is almost like a gunmetal colour. Right, so the light's gone green, so I'm just going to roll it through my die cutting machine. So, carefully taking off my shims and carefully picking up my cards so that I don't move my hot foil stamp. I'm putting this back on the base so that it stays at temperature. And then I can peel my foil and see if I've got good foiling, over foiling or what. Now if you have trouble getting the edge up, take a piece of your low tack tape, stick it on top of your foil and use that to pull your foil off. Now I think that is pretty good. Let me get the camera to focus on it. There we are. So, three shims it is. Now normally when I'm doing this, I don't keep pulling my GoPro and foil off the base. So it happens really quickly when I'm actually just, just creating something. But so you can see what I'm doing, I need to pull my base unit over here. So what I'm going to do is pull it over, open the lid, and again, I'm being very careful not to move my hot foil stamp. So I can put a piece of foil on. That 
looks like it's a bit big, but I'm going to go with it. And then I can put my card on into the corner. Okay, just double check that is lined up properly with the corner. That's it, I'm going to put a piece of tape on to hold it still. Okay, and then I'm going to put my shims on. So one there. I'm not going to line them up exactly, I'm going to offset them slightly. Because sometimes when you're using quite a few shims, if you line them all up, you end up with it leaving a line on your card like it's embossed it. So that will avoid that. Back onto the base to make sure it's hot. And there, it does need to heat again. So as I say, quite often, while I'm putting my foil down and positioning my card, my go press will have heated itself to the right temperature. Um, so I don't lose time waiting for that to happen. But I do need some more foil. So while I'm waiting, I can cut some more foil. So I've got a piece here I can use to measure. So I've got it the same size as I had it last time. Oh, and then my lights come off. So I'll leave that and I'll roll this. So, just pulling it off the base. Going nice and slowly through the die, cut, die cutting machine. Carefully removing the shims and carefully picking up my card. Take the tape off, peel the foil. Okay, so that's one side done. And then straight away, you put down the next piece of foil. And you rotate your card. So I've done that one. So now I'm going to rotate the card and do the next corner. So this is why I'm being very careful not to move my hot foil stamp. Because if I'm careful and don't move it, then every corner will have the hot foil stamp positioned exactly the same. So one shim, double one. Close the lid and then make sure it's at temperature. Foil. Oh, now the really good thing is, now I've actually got a used piece of foil, I can trim that to, you know, nearer to the size I actually need and use that as a template to cut my foil. I'm just going to snip there so I can see the piece of size of the piece I need to cut off. down the foil and do another piece from the other end I've got a bit of damage on there so yeah that one I'm going to get this so that I get the best piece So 
Well, that's gonna let my scissors kind of crunch the foil. Got some damage on that end, so I'm not gonna use that piece. So I've got my next two pieces of foil there ready to go. Get rid of my rubbish. Right, so this is a temperature. I'm going to roll it again. Might have been a bit quick. slowly okay so this should be my second corner done I just need to do the other two. Now, I'm not going to make you watch me do that, but I do literally just put the foil on, make sure I'm positioning the car so that it's one of the corners that hasn't been foiled that is over the top of the hot foil stamp. Add my shims. Close the lid and make sure it's at temperature. So I'm going to pause the camera there and finish that off and then show you it when it's done. Hello, so finished off my foiling. I've done all four corners, corners and I've just used the one hot foil stamp. Let me just grab it. It was cooling. So I've just used that hot foil stamp. Set it up in the correct place for one of the corners. And then for the others, I've just rotated my card each time. So you don't end up having to keep waiting for your hot foil stamp to heat up. There's a little bit of time when the GoPro and foil um, maintains its temperature. Um, but you, you lose a few seconds at a time while it's doing that. So when you're not actually trying to demonstrate at the same time, that's really quick to do. Okay, you, you probably talk, you know. It's literally, you know, take it off, change the foil, put it back on, roll it through, take the foil off, rotate the card. You know, it, 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 it's really quick. So let's have a look at that with my card. I've kind of got a black and gold thing going on here. And then I've used the copper just to make it just a tone darker. So I've used the same foil for my square to go in there as I've used on my piece of gold card to foil my happy birthday. So yeah, it definitely looks better with the black. And of course I can add foam pads if I want to or leave it flat if I need to post it. Um, that's entirely up to you. I just think that it makes a lovely frame and it doesn't have to fit exactly. This could be a square, you know. Um, this could be a fancy square. So we find some fancy squares. So you know, it could be a fancy square on there or in a smaller size. Lots gives, gives you lots of opportunities to decorate your cards with some foiling, just using one hot foil stamp. And of course, it means it doesn't have to be an exact size, your frame. I could have done this on a bigger piece of card and used it for the, the whole background of the card because it would, you know, it's if I put it there, I'm still not going to get much gap between the corners, and in fact, at the moment, they're overlapping. So that's that idea I had. So let me put that to one side. 
then for this one I've used my hot foil stamp but it's it's bigger than my my final cut out piece of card so it's something like that it would fit the card's been cut there so but what I would recommend for if you're going to do something like that is cut your piece of card just very slightly bigger than your, your fancy die. I wouldn't recommend cutting with this and then trying to get your card lined up on your GoPress correctly each time. Leave it as a square. So measure your die to its largest points and cut yourself a square the right size. Um, Or assume that this would be in the middle of a piece of card so although I've die cut this piece of card it's a square and it's just just bigger than this so what I could do there is get my hot four stamp and let me find that one got it here somewhere I'm sure I picked, that's it. I picked it up because I've been showing it to you so that was this one um, but w whatever you're using um foil it onto your square and just have a look at where where you're going to cut see how much of it you're going to end up with on your die because i don't want it overlapping too much or at all really so just have a think about that you might want to mark the halfway points on your square let me just move these out of the way and that right so if i put my die down and just mark where get it centered up do make sure that you you, you know you're gonna work with your die centered so if i if i just choose a corner mark where that die is going to come to so I'm, i've marked that on what will be my waist and then I'm gonna I can put my die down. Remember it has to go pattern side down when you position it. Okay, and I don't want it to end up overlapping, so that would be fine. But if I bring it down here, you see, then this piece and this piece are going to come along too far. Let me just get my camera to focus on that. So you can see my pencil mark. Zoom in a bit. So you can see that would come past my pencil mark. So I want to move my die out at the corner a bit and then check its position on the other end and just you know make sure I'm going to get an attractive kind of distribution of the pattern. Okay, so I'm going to go back down to normal. So I'm going to position that and I'm going to use my magnet again. get that in position and then I'm going to fall on that piece of card so I'm trying to get away from using um, gold and silver foil here so let's put the die to one side for a minute I'll just shoot to move out of the way um, so what shall I use I've got some lovely blue here that might be nice yeah let's use, use the blue dark blue and then this is a couture creations for and this is blue foil mirror finish so lovely deep indigo blue um, I'll get my I might end up cutting this a bit oversized to begin with got something sticky on my scissors I need to clean them. So I shall do that in a minute when I've turned the camera off. Now, just get an idea of how big this needs to be. So again, I'm going to come. I think I've probably done that far too big. So I'm just going to come along. Short way. Go 45 degrees. until I'm far enough along a little bit further and 
then straight up and that way I end up with a piece of foil I can use for the other corner and that's far too big I'm just going to trim that off there So that be about the right size. Okay, so I was measuring that and actually I should have had my foil the other way up to measure it because it will be the other way up when I'm using it, but that's still fine. Okay, so let's position this on the go press. It's exactly the same process as before. So cardboard on there, lined up with the corner, slide my fingers under, hold it down, slide it off and it's off the edges of the cards and that's fine. Remember I'm going to cut this out with a different die. Okay and now I need my foil. No, I need to heat this up first. And Heating the hot foil stamp up first and then adding the carbon foil and only having it on there for a short time reduces the likelihood of overfoiling. Okay, so while I'm waiting, I can cut another piece of foil. That should be hot, it's not a large hot foil stamp. Oops, only one piece of foil. Again, being careful that you don't move your hot foil stamp. I'm not worried about that edge because I'm not actually using it. My die cut, make sure that's the right way up as well. piece of tape. I'm going to use the same shims as before. And take a chance this time. So that's just coming back to temperature. I don't anticipate that taking very long. temperature I'm going to roll it through Peel this off. Yep, that's fold really nicely. Okay, it's off the edge, but that's fine. So, new piece of foil. Rotate my card. Doesn't matter which order I do the corners in. Don't forget to put the shims back in. And that needs to go around all four sides. So let me do that and then come back to you. Okay, so finish that foiling. Now I need to cut it out. So I'm just using a kind of fancy square. So I'm just going to line this up, centre it on my card. I'm going to tape it down. Do make sure you tape down to the waist. What will be the waist? And I usually use 
um, at least two bits of tape just to make sure it can't swivel in the die cutting machine. I'm going to tape that down. Okay, so I'm going to cut away some of that foiled card. Over and get foil everywhere. So that's my die. Get my cutting plates out of the way. So let me bring my card base back. So I've got here, so I've cut using the same nesting die set. I'm just going to give this a brush off. Pick up some dusty bits in the die cutting machine. Okay, so using the next die up in the set i've cut a mat for that because i found that when i did this with it just on the edges i bring this one back in because it it goes right to the edges it it, it, it got a bit lost it needed a mat so whichever version i'm, I'm using so i've got a mat cut from there but before I stuck everything down I've cut a mat for my sentiment also out the middle so frugal crafting which means I'm wasting as little as possible so I've just got some pattern paper here from my stash matted with the same card onto a card blank and then I'm going to have my foil panel on there. And my sentiment in the middle. And I've put my sentiment for this one on some foam pads. So that would be my completed card for that. Okay, so that's fine. But what if I'm not using a square? What if I'm using a rectangle? So I've got a rectangle here that I prepared earlier. Let's think about it. Where's that card? Can't be busy yet. I've got my bits in there. So I'm using squares with circles, and I thought, well, if I've got a, a rectangle, I probably want an oval in the middle. Okay. So if I want to use a square hot foil stamp, a symmetrical one. I've got a small one here. Okay, so that would go quite nicely in the corner of there without overlapping at the top, I don't think. It might just touch. So let's lose the oval for a minute. So I could use that one, but okay, so. Let's put it on the, the go press and foil and see what happens, shall we? So I'm going to turn that over because I need the pattern side down. And I want to just line it up with the edges of my... I've got an embossed pattern on the edge of this die cut. So there's my rectangle. So let's bring the go press and foil over. So exactly the same as before. I want to position that. Now that would go over there. I'm actually going to put that in a different corner. To start with, I'm actually going to put it in that one. Let's 
joint level. And that's just so that I get it roughly where it was before. And that's so I don't confuse you. Okay, so I'm going to put it there. And foil it. Now, what colour shall I use for this one? Um, well, let's use the grey. So you can see what that's like. So let me warm that up while I cut some foil. There's an end here somewhere. There we are. So obviously I don't need as wide a piece for this. I think that's probably enough. Piece of foil. Let's never check that is the right size. Yeah, that will do nicely. Might even be a bit big. I'm going to cut another piece. So I might get some overfoiling on this if my foil really is too big. I'm just trying to do this quite quickly. Couple of pieces of foil. Okay, let's pull the GoPress over and position this. So, piece of foil. Which are the two pieces? I'm just going to leave the excess hanging off, off the end. stock on and tape it down I'm going to use the same shims again I'm going to take a chance on that being right but you might want to do a test like I did before with a scrap piece of card and one of my little off cuts of foil So I'm just waiting for that to make sure it's hot enough. Okay, so that's hot enough. I'm going to roll it through. There's my shims. And there's my foiling. Oh, turn the cat in the background, sorry. Okay, so I've got my foiling. I'm going to take, take my tape up as well. Okay, so now I want to do, so I've done that corner, I want to do the next one. But if I turn it round here, I'm not over my hot foil stamp. So I can do the diagonally opposite corner. So I've got foil there. I can do that corner because the forward one is now there. So I should do that. I've lost my piece of foil now. There. So I'm going to do that diagonal one. 
and then I'm going to need to move my hot foil stamp. So when it's a rectangle, I can't do all four with my hot foil stamp in the same place. I have to do two and then move it and then do the other two. So just bear with me. Welcome back. So I fold two corners and then if I want to do the other corner, I need to reposition my hot foil stamp. So I need to put that over there. Get it lined up as much as I can, the same as I did the first two. And it is a very much a, a buy eye and hope for the best on this. So I have lined that up in the edge, the edge the same way as I did the first time, and then I need to put that on my go pressing foil. Okay, so this time I'm going to line up with this far corner as before I was lining up this one. I'm going to line up with that one. So again, my hot foil stamp is roughly in the middle of my go press and I just find that works best with my die cutting machine sometimes four things near the edge um, but I just find it easier to work with this away from the edge particularly when I'm taping the card down so there's my hot foil stamp that needs to warm up again because I had to leave it to cool down so I could pick it up and reposition it Now, while I'm waiting, I can cut some foil. If I trim my base foil, I shall know how much I need. trim my base so that I can see how much foil I need. I don't want to cut up you know more than I really need to. of card so my foil now remember I'm lining up with this corner this time that will do nicely piece of tape my shins This time over this side of the card. And then I need to make sure that's hot and roll it through again. So it's just warming up. I need to cut my other piece of foil while that's warming up. Rolling this through.
okay so that's my third corner done there and then I can add more foil and turn my card all the way around so I can do the other corner okay so foil not my piece of foil but that's my piece of foil there's foil on there so I'm making sure I've got the right corner so this one is going over the hot foil stamp And my shims roll it through I need to heat it one last time nearly there okay so last corner my foil off so that so I've not actually folded a sentiment for this topper as yet but if you can imagine so you get, you're covering up just a little bit of the foiling but it'll give you that sense of dimension and decoration and obviously it could go that way as well so that's using the symmetrical hot foil stamps but what if they're not okay i've got a couple here that are definitely not symmetrical oh actually i've got three i like corner hot foil stamps i kind of collect them <laughs> so something like this one let's get the camera to focus on that there we are so it's much longer on one side than the other so if I try and work this round a square or a rectangle, I'll grab a square for a minute. So if I try and put this on a square, then that's going to go there and there. But when I'll come to there, it's going to be that way round. Okay, so it's, it's not going to give me kind of even corners. Okay, so let me just... Let me just use the back of this and just draw the draw on where they're going to be. So it would be that way up. So let's put it that way. So I'm just going to kind of draw around it so you get get an idea. You might want to do that just to see how things would would be when you when you laid them out. So roughly around the edges. Okay, and then if I if I keep that where it is but rotate my card you get an idea of how that's going to come into that corner and then again if I lift it up and rotate my card again and I really am drawing around this very roughly to get an idea Leave it there and we'll take the card. Then I can be sure I haven't turned the hot foil stamp round. Okay, so I'm, it's going to overlap something like that. I've got 
camera, I think it's going to get better lighting. Okay, so that's it. So, yeah, so I don't think that's going to look right. I really don't. It's going to overlap a lot and not really work. So, but what I could do is only do two corners. And then I can put some flowers or a butterfly or something on the other to balance it up. So I've got this one from an older Couture Creations collection. So it, it's probably been around a couple of years, that one. Um, and then I've got some Spellbinders ones. And these are nice and big. That one's actually far too big for this size topper. But it comes with a little one. And these actually come with dies to cut them out as well. I'm going to do a separate video all about just using this die and hot foil stamp set. But I could do that. In fact, it'll be the other way up. And do that on two corners. So let's have a look at how that would look. Okay, so bear with me a minute. I just need to sort out my go press. I'm going to position this in exactly the same way using my magnet. Okay, just on the back there. But then I'll let me sort it out and I'll come back to you. Okay, so I've positioned this on my go press and full using my magnet exactly the same way. My card's going to line up with this corner here. Okay, and I've cut myself some foil. So let's put that on there line my card up corner there tap it down so you're getting the hang of this now whatever i'm doing i'm going to use my three shims again i hope that's okay so we might get some overfoiling we'll have to see so i'm just going to make sure that's hot enough That's the temperature, so I'm going to roll that through. Turn the camera for you a bit. Now, this hot foil stamp has got some quite large flat areas on it. Well, it's only a small hot foil stamp, so I'm going to give it an extra roll. And as I've got a wide die cutting machine, I'm going to turn my go press slightly and do that. So I actually come across it at a different angle. It's a bit like turning your die bit on your die cutting machine. But obviously I can't turn the die. So I've just turned my go press. Now if you're and you've got a narrow die cutting machine you won't be able to do that so you, you might end up using an extra shim if you've got something that um, needs more pressure so let me just flip that up that looks like that's filled really nicely let's peel it and see There we are. So then I just need to. Now I put this so the long part of the corner is pointing along the length of my machine. And that's something else that you ought to do if you can, because again, you get the best pressure. So I fold that one. OK, I'm not going to fold that one. I'm going to go around so that my foil corner is in the corner of my go press okay so there we are the full corner is going down in the corner of the go press the one diagonally diagonally opposite it is the one that i'm now foiling okay make 
sure that's hot enough. No, it's not. Sometimes it is. So particularly if you're using the bigger version. You can see it's got some quite large flat areas. So I really want my pressure coming down here as much as I can rather than trying to get pressure across that. Okay. So when you've got large flat areas, that's the equivalent of having a very intricate die cut so that the pressure gets spread out more across it. So as I say, you, you may find you need extra shims when you've got large flat areas. There we are, so the green light's on. Off. Yeah, I haven't got perfect foil in there, but you can you can see the idea. So I've done opposite corners. Let me just bring the card back. The card base that that would go with, so the pink one. So I've got that version on my topper for this. I foiled, I did it in some, some silver and I did it using um, just a normal cutting die. So I foiled with that and then I cut it out with a slightly larger plain die. So I've actually got a, a thin line and some stitch detail. Let me zoom the camera in. There we are, I've got a thin line, some stitch detail foiled around the edge of my topper there. Okay, so that's that version. Okay, and I could use the same topper with this version, but I might want to add some die cut flowers on the plain corners. Get the camera to focus on that for me. Okay, so you've got foiling in two corners, but you, it gives you scope to. Put some die cut flowers in okay so there are options okay now i've just got one more card to show you so let me just grab it so on this one i've used this hot foil stamp, which is the one we used oh, on the black. There we are. So it's this one. Okay. So on here, I've used some platinum paper and I've foiled it off the edge slightly. And then I've die cut a rectangle. It's a fancy die cut. And then I've matted that, put that down on some black card. But I've cut the middle out of the next size down. And then I've gone down another size. And again, fold it off the edge. And I'm just doing opposite corners on these rather than every corner. And then I've added a die cut. So you don't have to put a sentiment on here. You could put a die cut in the middle. So colours don't go. But if you imagine I've got that instead with a lovely die cut on it. And then my sentiment perhaps at the bottom. 
Okay, so there's lots of ideas. I'll make up some more cards. And um, then you can see, see the finished results. I'll do a blog post to go with this as well, just explaining what I've done. But if I don't think the hot foil stamps are still available, I won't give details of them. Um, because in some cases I can't find the product codes. I've had them a long time, some of them. So, but remember for the future, when collections come out, if you see a corner, now you know what you can do with corners. So you can just go, oh, corner, it's a nice one. And you'll know what to do. It doesn't have to be these specific ones, which is why I've used a variety. Okay, thank you for watching.